Okay, so in this video, we will find the Maclaurin series of sine of x. So our function here is sine of x. Let's call it f of x. And we know the Maclaurin series of f of x is given by the following formula. n going from 0 to infinity, the nth derivative of f at 0 over n factorial times x to the n. So as always, to find the Maclaurin series of a function, we have to first find the higher derivatives and then evaluate them at zero. And hopefully we'll see a pattern emerging for the higher derivatives of f of x. So let's start differentiating. f of x is sine of x. This is the zeroth derivative, the function itself. Let's take the first derivative, f prime of x. The derivative of sine is cosine. Differentiate one more time, obtain the second derivative. The derivative, of course, is negative sine. Let's differentiate one more time. The third derivative, well, the derivative of sine is cos, therefore the derivative of negative sine is negative cos. And let's differentiate one more time. And hopefully you'll notice something interesting in the process. Well, the derivative of cos is negative sine, therefore the derivative of negative cos will be positive sine. And if you notice, the fourth derivative brings us back right to the zeroth derivative, the function itself. And because of this, this pattern will repeat itself forever. If we differentiate again, we will obtain cos. Then again, we will obtain negative sine. Then again, negative cos, then back to sine of x. So what we have here is a four cycle for the higher derivatives of sine of x. Sine, cos, negative, sine, negative, cos. And right back to the beginning. Sine, cos, negative, sine, negative, cos, and so forth. So now we have the pattern. Let's evaluate the derivatives at x equals zero. So we will get f of zero, f prime of zero, f double prime of zero, and f triple prime of zero. Well, sine of zero is equal to zero. Cos of zero is equal to one. Sine of zero is equal to zero. Negative zero is zero. Cos of zero is one, so this will give us negative one. And this pattern again will repeat itself forever. So we'll get zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, one, zero, negative one forever. This will give us the numerator of the coefficients of the Maclaurin series of sine of x. Now, to find a concise way of writing out the Maclaurin series of sine of x, let's expand the series. We will simplify and see if we can find a pattern, a closed form formula for the leftover terms. So, sine of x is equal to. Let's now expand this out. So when n is zero, the zero derivative of f at zero over 0 factorial x to the 0 plus the first derivative over 1 factorial x to the 1 plus the second derivative at 0 over 2 factorial x squared plus the third derivative at 0 over 3 factorial x cubed plus the fourth derivative at zero over four factorial x to the four plus when n is five, the fifth derivative at zero over five factorial x to the five plus the sixth derivative at zero over six factorial x to the six and so forth. So all we've done is we've expanded out the first few terms of the Maclaurin series of sine of x but now we can replace the numerator in each case by the appropriate values. So what will we end up with? Well, the first term, f of 0 is 0, so this term vanishes. It's equal to 0, let's forget it. The first derivative at 0 is 1, so we'll have here x to the 1 over 1 factorial. And the next 
term, the second derivative at zero is equal to zero. So this term will be zero. The third derivative at zero is negative one, so this will give us negative x cubed over three factorial. And now we've reached this point and we know that the fourth derivative and so forth will simply have a cycle back to the beginning of this cycle. So, fourth derivative, we go right back to here, we get zero. The fifth derivative will give us one, so we'll have one here, so this will give us x to the five over five factorial. Now we're here, the sixth term will give us zero, so this will be zero times x to the six over six factorial, this will vanish. And then the next term will be negative one, now here I ran out of space, but it will be negative one, x to the seven over seven factorial. And this will cycle again. And hopefully now we can see a pattern. You see, the powers are odd, so one, three, five, seven, and whatever the power is, we divide by the corresponding power factorial. One, one factorial, three, three factorial, five, five factorial, seven, seven factorial. And there is also an alternation in sign, positive, negative, positive, negative. So we can probably guess the next two terms, right? Positive, x to the nine over nine factorial, then negative, x to the 11 over 11 factorial, and then so forth. So let's see if we can write this concisely using sigma notation. Well, what do we have here? We have a series. And going from zero to infinity, and let's capture every aspect of the series one piece at a time. First we will capture the alternation in sign. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative forever. This is of course obtained using the term negative one to the n. As we take consecutive powers of negative one, this will alternate between positive and negative one. Make sure it begins at positive one. Negative one to the zero is positive one. So this will capture the alternation in sign. And then the only other piece is x to a power over that same power factorial. Well, if you notice, the powers range over all positive odd integers, which can be obtained using 2n plus 1, over, of course, the same power, 2n plus 1 factorial. And you can make sure it starts off at the right place. When n is 0, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1, 1. So we will get, when n is 0, the first term, x to the one over one factorial. And you can of course try if you're not 100% sure with this, when n is one, two times one, two plus one, three. When n is two, two times two, four plus one, five, and so forth. So now we have a closed form expression for the expanded Maclaurin series of sine of x. As an exercise, it is very easy to show that this Maclaurin series, this infinite power series, converges for all values of x using, of course, the ratio test as we have a factorial. And because sine of x is a very nice function, it actually is equal to its Maclaurin series for all values of x. So there you have it. Here's the Maclaurin series of sine of x and the equality between the function and its Maclaurin series is valid for all values of x. As a nice application of this, we could decide to evaluate by hand sine of one, of course one being in radians. This equality is when x is in radians. So suppose we wanted to approximate sine of one by hand. We can replace x by any value of our choice as the equality is valid for all values of x. So here we replace x by one.
Well, 1 to any power is 1, so we'll be left with negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 1 factorial. And as always, if you want an approximate value to the or to any infinite series, it suffices to add the first few terms. So let's add the first six terms of this infinite series. <coughs> well, here they are for all values of x. <coughs> Sorry. And so we've replaced x by 1, so we will obtain Well, 1 over 1 factorial is 1, so this will be 1 minus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 5 factorial minus 1 over 7 factorial plus 1 over 9 factorial minus 1 over 11 factorial. And again, we're simply adding, subtracting simple rational numbers. We could carry this out by hand, and if we did, Of course, here again, we now truncate the infinite series by only adding up the first six terms. So if we do add up these six terms, perform long division to get the decimal expansion, we will obtain approximately 0 So sine of 1, where 1 is in radians, is approximately 0 0.841. As always, when we have an approximation to any given value, we ask, well, how good is this approximation? Well, if you notice, this approximation came from adding the first few terms of not any type of series, but of an alternating series. So we can use here, of course, the error estimate of the alternating series test. So from this we get that the difference between the exact value of sine of 1 in radians minus its approximate value is no bigger than, and if you recall, the error estimate of the alternating series test says if you truncate an infinite series that is an alternating series, the error of the approximation will never be bigger than the size of the first admitted term. Well, after the 1 over 11 factorial, it will be 1 over 13 factorial. So we have here an upper bound for the error, and if you calculate this with a calculator, you will get approximately 1.61 times 10 to the negative 10. So we have an incredibly small error to our approximation of sine of 1 only by adding the first six terms of this infinite series. And the reason why we have such a good approximation even though we've only added the first six terms of the series is because of the factorial. The factorial, if you recall, grows extremely rapidly, and so the leftover terms will shrink very rapidly to zero. And so this is why by adding only a few terms of the series allows us to obtain a very good approximation to, in this case, sine of 1. And again, I want to emphasize that this we can do by hand no problem. It just takes a little bit of time to crunch out the arithmetic. And that's it. Now, as an exercise, we have here the Maclaurin series of sine of x for all values of x. As an exercise, use the exact same idea and come up with a Maclaurin series of cos of x. And you should find that cos of x, expressed as a Maclaurin series, is given by the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. And it's almost the same as the Maclaurin series for sine of x. And the trick to remember one, if you have the other, is the fact that sine is an odd function, so we have here odd powers, odd factorial. Cosine is an even function, so we replace the odd powers and the odd factorial by 
an even power, even factorial. So this will be 2n instead of 2n plus 1. And everything else is just the same. And it can be shown that this power series converges for all values of x using, of course, the ratio test. And because cos of x is a nice function, it is equal to its, Maclaur its, Ma sorry, its Maclaurin series for all values of x. And again, to get a feeling for what this power series looks like, expand out the first few terms. So you will get 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial minus x to the 6 over 6 factorial and so forth. And that's it.